so the negatives. We made a list about <clears throat> some negative aspects that we encountered here on the island. It's, you know, my, my voice breaks. <clears throat> it's too early in the morning. And we want to lay, lay this list out to you. We want to share with you the things we don't like so much here on the island. It doesn't mean we, that we are going to put the island in a bad spot or, or that we are trying to talk down uh, people who want to move here or to come here in on holidays. We are just trying to be realistic, to have an, ob an objective uh, opinion about the things that uh, from our perspective could be better here on the island. Some things can be improved, other things it's related to nature and this is how it is. Anyway, we want to bring it out and then let you decide if this uh, applies to you or not. We mostly compare these negatives based on our life in Austria. Maybe if you move from Portugal to here, it's similar or from southern Spain. In any case, this doesn't apply to people who just come here on holiday. It applies mainly to those of you who think about relocating here. And meanwhile, coffee. As you can probably see, I came to uh, the local pool here in Santa Cruz. One of the things that uh, we found a little bit, uh, yeah, it's a negative, is the limited the limited jobs here and also income wise Tenerife and the Canary Islands are uh, well how should I put it they have a lower income here and also jobs are very scarce you can find jobs but mostly in the tourist sector if you plan to come here and get rich maybe you have a super idea but other than that uh, don't expect too much you can live here but it's difficult to find a job especially if you're qualified in some areas that are not here like metal industry or coal mining things similar to that uh, mostly the jobs here are in tourism and related to tourism also mostly in the south i think the canary islands have a unemployment rate of 22 or 23 percent so that's huge compared to other countries which have like three four five seven income wise and uh, the job market here is quite bad at the moment it's possible that this will change but who knows if you're fortunate enough like I am to find a job in IT remote, then yeah, definitely worth it. I find a job via LinkedIn as a IT support a level two and three. It's definitely possible to work remote, work from home. You have to have the skills. If you know a different language other than English, that is an advantage here. Also, if you find a job here, pay attention to the salary because salaries are lower here than almost everywhere everywhere in uh, Spain or on the continent. The minimum wage here is, I think, around 1,000 euro, maybe less. Compared to other countries like Austria, you get here only 12, 12 wages. Uh, in Austria, you get 14. Actually, we have two photo shootings today. One is with this family here, and the other one in two hours with uh, a couple that booked us online for a wedding proposal. And we came to Las Teresitas Beach. We're gonna shoot here on the beach. We are just waiting for the organizer who organized this uh, proposal. Another thing would be flying or flights. We are on an island here close to the coast of Africa. So no matter where you want to go, you have to fly. If you plan to go to Europe or the continent, you have to fly, doesn't matter. If you plan to go to the UK, you have to fly. If you're like us, due to our profession, we have to constantly fly back and forth to the continent, to the peninsula, to photograph weddings. That has an impact on our budget. And because flights have a certain schedule, we cannot uh, choose when we fly. We have to, we are, we are depending on that schedule. Uh, mostly flights to Austria are on Friday, from Austria to, to Tenerife on Sunday. That means that we're not seeing the kids during the weekend, one of us, because one of us stays home. So that's, uh, that's something for us that is, that's, that's a negative. I'm pretty sure if you want to visit family and friends, you'll have to fly back and forth. We took that in account when we moved here, 
but now uh, because it's summer and we have a lot of activity with photography we have to fly a lot but definitely we spend around I think now maybe 800 euros a month the connections are not always good we have to sleep somewhere in the airport or maybe book a hotel maybe it doesn't affect you but this is a from our perspective this is a negative another aspect would be certain food products that we don't find here and especially meat products I don't like the meat products here I don't like the salami I don't like the sausages here I'm comparing it of course to Austria and also Romania so definitely if you're a meat lover like I am you're gonna suffer here Christina is a vegetarian so for her it doesn't matter but for me it's definitely something I have to adapt to the only thing that you can find and it's good but I don't eat it because it's I, I don't fancy it it's like this Hamon, also certain fruits that we are used to in Europe, like watermelon. It's it's uh, it's a little bit expensive here in the summer, and it's it comes from Morocco. The good one, peaches, apricots. It's a little bit difficult to find, uh, and also to find it at a good price. You have to adapt to what's here, to what you can find here. Some foods are better, like bananas or this, the exotic fruits that grow here most time of the year uh, bananas oranges avocado papaya mango there is also a lack of dairy products that we are used to creme fraiche some of the cheeses i don't like at all coffee is another product that we don't find here when i say coffee i mean coffee beans because we have a machine that grinds the coffee and uh, coffee beans here we don't find it. We've, we've looked everywhere and the closest that we can find is uh, actually the coffee for Starbucks, but it's not, we don't like it. For us, it's a downside. For me, it's a downside. Another negative aspect that it hit us starting last year in uh, November is Kalima. Kalima is this desert storm that uh, starts in Western Sahara and then the wind blows the sand all the way here to the Canary Island. When the Kalima hits the island it's like a haze everywhere and small sand particles are everywhere like on cars, in the air, the air quality is very bad and usually Kalima is during the winter times but and usually maybe twice, three times. But this year was an exceptional year when it comes to Kalima. We experienced it very often. During Kalima, everyone stays at home. No one goes outside. Also, there is like this uh, greenhouse effect. Visibility on the streets is uh, lower. I would compare it to a bad autumn day in Europe or a bad autumn week in Europe. Yeah, that's another, it's another negative. Another thing would be the online orders. Well, here everything moves very, very slow. I'll give you an example. I ordered something on Amazon and it came after two months. Another thing is I ordered something online via a shop here in the Canary Island. It came after three days. It broke after one month and I sent it in repair almost three months ago. I still haven't received it back. You can find almost everything here on the island, on the local shops, but when it comes to specific products and you don't find it here and you have to order it online, be patient. Christina also tried to order a specific swimsuit and it came after two months. It's uh, something you have to consider if you are like me, I like to order online, especially things for photography that I can find cheaper on Amazon, or that I cannot find here on the island certain specific things and that means I have to wait months for them to arrive. I think it's also cheaper if you plan to fly to Europe or to the continent, order everything you have to order online at a certain address on the mainland and then bring it back here. Another thing that we found a little bit 
bad here is the infrastructure when it comes to roads, cars, mechanics. This is a recent development that I am very uh, upset about. Well, roads here, except the highway, tend to be a little bit bad. Like you can find potholes in the roads, bad roads like this. Especially if you go out in the country, mechanics here, at least the ones I came in contact with are not that good. I had contacts with two mechanics, one Romanian and one uh, Spanish one. My car is still in repair since two weeks ago. So they give you a price and afterwards there, there's a different price, a much higher price. I'm not even gonna start with the Romanian one. Yeah, mechanics, um, I had bad experience with them. The cars here are pretty much old. You can find new cars, but people here don't, you know, for them cars is just a mean to go to from A to B. The infrastructure here regarding roads and everything, I, I'm comparing this to Austria. Roads here are not that fantastic, except the highway. The highway is good. In Santa Cruz, streets are narrow and there's a problem with the parking. During summer, everything is like full. You definitely have to drive around to find a good parking spot, a free one. There are underground uh, parking places. You have to be careful, you have to be a good driver. Yeah, you have to adapt to this and you have to develop your uh, driving skills or buy a small car. But don't expect here miracles regarding streets, regarding cars, mechanics. It's a negative for me and for us. A photo shoot like this, it's not always easy when you have kids because of course they don't understand it's a photo shoot and they have to be like happy and sit still in the frame. But we have patience and we are taking it step by step, meaning that Christina will do some, some shots with the mother and the daughter and then with the father and the son and then all together until we have what we need. Another negative, well, not for us, but maybe if you consider moving here. Spain is not a social country, meaning that there are no social benefits here, like uh, maybe some of you are used to in your country. I know for a fact that in Austria you get a lot of money if you have kids, uh, if you are unemployed, or there is like this minimum income. The government warranties you if you don't have a job. Here it's not like this. Bear that in mind. I don't think there is like a child, alim, child subventions here. Don't know about it. We have three kids, so we, we don't get anything. Social benefits, I would say they are either almost in existence or if they exist they are lower than in most uh, European countries. A huge impediment for us here is the language. We didn't learn the language before we moved here and we, ha we are still having difficulties communicating with the locals. The locals here don't speak English, we don't speak Spanish. Of course after eight months we are starting to understand a bit more but we are not like fluent or anything. For us it's a downside but it's uh, our fault. It's not their fault. For the moment, uh, we consider this a negative that we don't speak uh, Spanish, but also that they don't speak English. We've been all over Europe and I find that Spain and France almost don't speak English at all. An important thing when you photograph family with kids is to keep the kids entertained. What we do, we try to make them laugh and look in the lens directly. Uh, we try to, you know, amuse them. I'm making faces. I'm pretty ugly, so it's not a big deal for me to make them laugh. I'm trying to make Fiona laugh. Yes. Keep them entertained, but you have to have patience and also to plan a little bit, like, uh, Put like two hours aside if you have uh, like families with kids. Another thing is uh, punctuality. Well, here everything happens mañana. As we like to say, this is like um, tranquilo de Tenerife. Everything is chilled. Everything is, you can't count on somebody if you say let's meet at six, that they will come at six. For example, we had to send something with UPS and they said, okay, I will come at 10 tomorrow. They came at 12. 
but they forgot some papers so they said okay I will come the next day the same hour at 10 then we waited the next day and they didn't came and they didn't came the day after so after the fourth after four days finally UPS came and um, took the package punctuality here is uh, a foreign word from our experience now they don't use it yeah take that in account if you are someone who has like a tight schedule or is used to being on time all the times or you used to services that arrive on time or meetings or stuff like this not gonna happen everything is manana everything is slow yeah punctuality is a, a is something that they have to learn or we have to adapt to it. Another negative would be the apartments here. There are not a lot of new buildings. The flats that you can find here are uh, old. The furniture is old or older. Now, this year, it's quite difficult to find something to rent for long term. Flat owners here prefer to rent flats like, like hotels, like Airbnb and not so much long term and I can understand that of course so that's why the rent situation on the island currently it's not very optimal you still have to look a lot for a place to also owners if you don't provide them with uh, like they ask of you for the last three payment slips so if you're not employed it's gonna be a little bit difficult what we did last year we paid one year in advance but that's also an exception if you don't speak the language again it's gonna be difficult to communicate with uh, with the owners or the agencies we are used uh, in Austria and in Romania to have wooden floor in our flats here you can't find this it's always tiles it's gonna be a little bit uh, rough but uh, don't give up uh, there's hope This is the part where Christina discusses some poses with Andrea. With Andrea, it's a break, and the male of the species with, with his pup, with his cub in the water, teaching him how to survive in the wilderness. So let me talk about another negative that we found out here in Tenerife. Events-wise like there's not much going on on the island there are no big concerts like Post Malone or uh, DJ Khaled or uh, U2 there there are here and there like local gigs uh, events concert there is also of course in June El Carnaval de Santa Cruz but other than that not much going on regarding events we have the auditorio de tenerife but it's mostly opera so don't expect if you move here from london or <laughs> vienna or berlin to have events a lot you have them but at a smaller scale with uh, probably not so known artists Let's resume the negatives now in this positive place but another negative would be for us because we like to ride bikes there's no infrastructure for uh, bike riding especially in Santa Cruz there are no bike lanes except I think one also the geography of the place is like up and down this shouldn't pose a problem but in the end uh, there's not a lot, of, a lot of bike lanes I haven't seen a lot of bikers inside the city I've seen bikers outside the city on Mount Teide surrounding Santa Cruz but in Santa Cruz it's not that developed <music> clients arrived a little bit late but nevertheless client is king so they uh, she got a big surprise the newly engaged now they are doing a little bit of uh, a little photo session they then will go up the mountain and have a photo session in the sun uh, this nice place is organized by a company here in Tenerife it's called how you call it? Brandwich Experience yes they are called Brandwich Experience 
check their Instagram. They have a lot of nice pictures all around Tenerife. So if you plan to do a surprise like this, call us for photography and call them for the setting. I will film the setting a bit and then I think that's it with uh, today's vlog. I'm so happy for them. Now they will pop up, pop the champagne. Oh yes. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Beautiful setting here. Also a little bit of background Spanish music. Yes, guys, thanks for watching today's vlog. I'm gonna link a video up here. We filmed a couple of reasons if you want to move here. Check this video out and hopefully see you next time. Bye, guys.